passage that we so frequently go to when we're thinking about communion, we're thinking about the Lord's Supper. And that is, of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I want to continue what we were talking about within our worship hour this morning. We are the body of Christ. Every one of us together is the body of Christ. And of course, there are obligations that go with being part of the body of Christ. I, you, whatever gift I and you have, we need to use that for the benefit of His body. And each one of us need to make sure that we are showing the same care for each other, regardless of our background, regardless of even how well we know each other. That is a responsibility we have of being the body of Christ. But the responsibility we also have is to properly discern the body, Paul says. Read this well-known text with me in 1 Corinthians 11, and I'm going to start in verse 27. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. There is no doubt that what we are doing here has an individual component to it. You are responsible, and I am responsible to, as Paul says there in verse 28, examine himself. I have a responsibility to discern the body. You have a responsibility to discern the body. But what does that mean? I think all of us, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we we try to imagine, we try to think about Jesus' body on the cross. But that's pretty challenging. Because we don't even know what Jesus looked like. And in our culture, we don't even know what crucifixion looked like. Maybe uh, our image that we have, quite honestly, for many of us, it came from a European painting. We, we, we see this European Jesus with a halo around his head and, and uh, blood around his hands and his ankles and maybe uh, uh, blood coming from his side. And we, we saw a painting. And so when we, we think of Jesus on the cross, we, we think of that. Or maybe we saw a movie. Maybe we saw the Passion of the Christ and we saw this very visceral, this very uh, graphic depiction of a crucifixion. So maybe that helped us to, to think about what Jesus' body on the cross went through. But I'm not sure that's what Paul intended for them to do when he said, discern the body. Because I want you to think about what Paul is saying here in the context of 1 Corinthians 11. I won't take time to reread it, but we read in our sermon this morning from verses 17 through 22. And there Paul is rebuking them because they're not partaking of the Lord's Supper in a correct way. They're they're doing it in a very divisive way. Where those who have a lot partake of a lot. And they're feasting and they're getting drunk. And those who have nothing, well, they have nothing. And then you skip down to verse 33. Right after Paul gives these instructions about each person examining himself and us discerning the body, he then says in verse 33, So then, my brothers, when you come to eat together, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. I'll tell you, I think we're unfair with the passage if we take verses 17 and on, and then we take verses 30 through 33, and we treat them separate, and we just take the Lord's Supper part, and we say, well, just Paul kind of you know, changed here and talked about the Lord's Supper. And then we came back to this notion about waiting for each other and eating together. and No, it's all connected. And I think it's even telling that in verse 29, when Paul says, anyone who eats and drinks 
without discerning the body. And he only says the body. He doesn't say the body and the blood. He simply says the body. And that has significance. Go back to the 10th chapter. The 10th chapter and start with verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? You probably already know, when we talk about communion, we're using the same word scripturally that would be for fellowship. We are participating together with the body of Christ. We are participating with Christ. But then read the next verse. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. What is the body that we are discerning? The saints in Corinth had not seen Jesus. And unless Paul was a really good artist and could draw a really great picture, they did not know what Jesus looked like. They did not know what that picture was of Jesus hanging on the cross. But they could still discern the body. Because what Paul is saying to them is, you are supposed to be partaking of this together as the body of Christ. And that has significance because this is not simply an individual reminder that God's sacrifice, the blood and body of Christ, was for me, but it was for all of us. And as Paul is writing that to this church who is divided between Jew and Greek and rich and poor, he is saying you need to discern the body. That Christ's blood and His body was given for all of you. And when you come together to partake, you are taking, not simply as an individual, there's a reason why we do it together. You are partaking as the body of Christ. God loved me. And Christ was sacrificed for me. And God loved you. And Christ was sacrificed for you. And this morning as we partake of the bread and we partake of the fruit of the vine, we do so discerning the fact that that sacrifice was given for each and every one of us. We do that together as the body of